Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to solve a polynomial inequality and this time we're going to do it algebraically. Um, you can also do these graphically, but if you need to show work, um, this would be the method that shows the most work. Um, so with this, basically what this is saying right here is we are looking for all x values that are greater than zero. So in that case, we're looking for all x values that make um, this positive. So we're looking for all positive values that when I plug them into here, I'm going to end up with a positive result. Um, so for this, the way that you start on here, the first thing that you do is you find the zeros. And the zeros are just the values um, that make this zero, so it's the crossing points, the turning points, it's um, where it crosses the x-axis. So in this case, we would just take each of these, it's already in factored form, so it's really easy to find the zeros. So either x minus 2 has to equal 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. So our zeros are at x equals 2 and x equals negative 4. In this case, it cannot equal these values because we're just looking for the values that are greater than 0, not equal to. So when we write our answer, whether you use set notation or interval notation, you want to make sure that you exclude these points. Um, so if you're using interval notation, that means that you're going to use parentheses um, for both of these values, um, depending upon where they are. So in order to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to use the zeros and figure out what's going on in between those values, whether it's positive or whether it's negative. So we know that at x equals negative 4, we have a point that it either crosses or touches the axis. And then at x equals positive 2, we also have a point. I'm just going to put an open circle to help remind us that it cannot equal these. So what we're going to do is the easiest way to do this algebraically is to just pick numbers in each of the intervals. Um, so we're going to pick values in each interval. Okay, so and I'm going to just set it up in table form just because it's the easiest way to do it. So we're going to pick any x values um, that fall in this interval. So like for example, to the left of negative 4, the first value would be negative 5. We want to pick a value that falls in between negative 4 and 2, so I'm going to pick 0. And then I'm going to pick a value that's to the right of positive 2, so I'm going to pick 3. You don't want to pick the zeros. You want to make sure that you pick a value that's to the left of, in between, and to the right of. I could have just as easily picked 1, negative 6, and 4. It doesn't matter as long as it falls in the interval. We're going to plug it into the equation x minus 2 squared times x plus 4. And we're going to look at our output. So we're going to look at the sign of output. In this case, if you remember, we're looking for the positive values or greater than zero. So we're looking for the sign to be positive. If you want, you can plug in the entire value into here. Um, but really, all I want to do is look at the sign. So with this one, if I take negative 5 minus 2, that gives me a negative value. But then I'm going to square it, which makes it positive. Negative 5 plus 4 gives me a negative value. So if I take a negative times a negative times a negative, that ends up with a negative sign. Like I said, if it's easier for you to see, I could have just as easily put negative 7 because negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7 squared, which gives me positive 49, times negative 1, which would give me negative 49. But we're just looking for the sign. So for the second one, what we would do is we would take and we're going to plug in 0 this time. So if I do 0 minus 2, that gives me a negative 2. But if I square a negative, it makes it positive. 0 plus 4 gives me a positive. So I have a positive times a positive, which is a positive. So we know that over here, all of these values are going to give me negative answers. Over here, all of these values are going to give us positive. So we know that everything between negative 4 and 2, not including them, um, would give us a positive answer, which is what we're looking for. 
And remember, you can have more than one interval, so we do have to check the last one. So if I plug in 3 minus 2, that gives me a positive squared. And then 3 plus 4 is also a positive, and a positive times a positive is always positive. So we also find that over here is positive. So the way that we would write this in interval notation is we would start with our lowest value. Remember, it can't include it because um, it's just greater than. So everything from negative 4 to positive 2, so all x values from negative 4 to positive 2, um, give us a positive output, output, and everything from 2 to positive infinity also gives us um, a positive output. Had this been greater than or equal to, we could have just said negative 4 to infinity, but we're excluding 2 because that's where it equals it, so um, that's why I had to write it this way. For set notation, if you are dealing with set notation, you would just say all values of x such that um, x is between negative 4 and 2 and it does not include it. I would just, that, that's all these mean is that it's x has to be greater than negative 4 but less than 2, not including it. And x can also be greater than 2. Um, with this, if you wanted to see a visual representation, if you have a graphing calculator or if you're on your computer, you can always use Desmos.com. I'm going to use the TI-84 plus color edition just to show you that graphically our answer makes sense. So I would go to the Y equals screen. Um, I would put in my parentheses and we always use this X. Don't use the X down here. So I would do X minus 2 squared times X plus 4. And I've already adjusted the window so that it fits this problem. I'll show you the window in just a second. If you have it on the regular one, it's not as easy to see, so sometimes you have to mess with the window to make sure that you can see it correctly. Um, so with this, basically you can see that it crosses at negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so my 0 is at negative 4 and my 0 is at 2. And from here to here it is positive. At 2, it touches it. So because we're just looking for greater than 0, this is a value of 0 here, so that's why we had to separate it. As always, oh, I told you I would show you the window. Sorry, let me show you the window really quickly. Um, this is the window that I set it up because it went so high. I did go up to 40 on my Y. Um, normally, if I just go to Zoom Standard, Zoom Standard will get it set back to the original. This is what it would have looked like had I not shown, so that's why I adjusted the Y axis. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, if there's other topics that you need to cover, please let me know that as well.